All right, everybody, Joanne Lee Molinaro was a high-power attorney for years before a cooking video she posted on her TikTok account. The Korean vegan then launched her life into a whole new direction. Now Joanne has more than 3 million followers across her social media platforms. Her videos combine Korean cooking with incredibly personal stories about her life, culture, and family. And she has a new book out, The Korean Vegan Cookbook, Reflections and Recipes from Oma's Kitchen. It's part it's part cookbook, it's part memoir. And our very own Marisol Castro has been following Joanne's journey and is now in Pix Plaza to introduce us to her. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dan and Hazel. And all I can say is thank goodness Joanne is from Chicago because this feels like spring to you, right? It sure does. It's a very brisk spring. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Oh, we're happy to be here. This, this cookbook, I, I, I'm... I almost don't want to call it a cookbook because it really is a memoir. It's also aesthetically beautiful. But talk to me about something that I think in current days day seems counterintuitive. You started with the pictures and you started with social media and then you took that and turned it into a voice that would then, you know, become the pages of a book. Yeah, so that's exactly right. I started as just a regular food blog. I had pictures, I had recipes. And after about a year of doing that, I decided to start sharing the stories that sort of go along with these recipes, i.e. the stories about my family. And what's so interesting to me is that, first of all, I, in, in complete transparency, I love food. <laughs> I will read cookbooks just for fun, mm. um, whether I use the recipes or not. But this is really a vehicle for you to talk about your experience growing up as an Asian woman, combating racism, combating mental health, why use this as a tool for that? And what was your goal in doing such? Oh, that's a great question, Marisol. I mean, food is just such a wonderful vehicle for bringing people together. Uh, disparate colors, disparate experiences, different ages, different creeds. We all need to eat, right? No matter what, we all need to eat. And so I love using food as sort of an, an opener, right? Hey, right. why don't you come to my dinner table and let's talk about things, important things, right. things that move people. You started off first as an attorney. Yes. I, I, it fascinates me when I see people come from completely different opposite ends of the spectrum and then they find themselves in the kitchen. How did you make that transition from attorney to, to chef cookbook author? <laughs> well, uh, the transition was a little bit, um, it was fun, actually. You know, my job as a lawyer can be incredibly demanding. And the time in my kitchen when I was cooking or baking or making food for my family was sort of my own meditative time. It was my break away from a really stressful job. And now I've been afforded this incredible opportunity to do something I love all the time and yeah. it's incredible. What are some of your favorites from from the cookbook? Well, one of my absolute favorites is definitely the pecan pot pie, which is mm. a huge favorite right now because Did pecan, you say pie, pecan pot, pot pie. pie. Yeah, so not pot like chicken pot pie, <laughs> but pot which is you make it in a pot. Uh, no, it's okay. pot actually refers to red bean paste. So pot means red bean in Korean. And so this pecan pie actually has an ingredient that my family, Korean family, is very familiar with, which is sweet red bean paste. Mm. And yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Will that make its way onto your Thanksgiving table? It absolutely does, because it's demanded <laughs> every single year. <laughs> totally. What was, it, what was the experience like making this cookbook. What did you draw upon? Who did you speak to? What was some of your inspiration? Well, undoubtedly the inspiration were my mom and my dad. And this book is really meant to be sort of like a love letter to my parents, you know, who sacrificed so much to come to the United States and to raise me and my brother here to give us a safe home. Uh, and the kind of home that they certainly didn't have when they were children and growing up in a war-torn country. Um, and so, so many of the stories here are about you know, honoring my mother and my father, who I am so grateful for and who I love so very much. And we can appreciate that because I think that is a universal story yes. of children and their parents. I mean, I can think to myself whenever I make chuletas, which are pork chops, Aww. I think of my mother. Yeah. Um, because that, that smell and even just that feeling in the kitchen just brings me back to growing up on 48 Baychester Avenue. And I think that is a universal story, which is why, again, I think food is one of the most special tools to bring people together.
You know, Joanne, when I first saw your book, I thought I saw the Korean and I was like immediately drawn and then I saw vegan. <laughs> Why the choice to do a vegan cookbook as opposed to just a more traditional cookbook? Sure. So I went plant-based in 2016 and that's actually why I started the food blog. I was very determined not to lose touch with my heritage and my cultural cuisine as a result of my dietary choices and restrictions. So that's why I created this cookbook. I wanted to prove to people that even if you decide to eat a little bit different, choose a healthier diet, that doesn't mean you need to give up all the right. foods that you grew up eating. How transferable is Korean food to the vegan diet? Because I, th I tell my mom, I'm like, Miriam, we got to get on this plant-based stuff. <laughs> She's like, um, sorry, your ancestors are rolling over in their graves. <laughs> I had the same conversation, and I would have been the first person to say that in the beginning. But I found that if you do a little digging, a little tweaking, you'll find that so many of our favorite recipes are vegetable-centric. There are a lot of vegetable sauces and flavors, and either you cut out the meat, you replace it with a meat alternative, and you're pretty much right there. Yeah, you're pretty much right there. So the goal for the book, it's out now. What do you hope your readers take away from this? Well, I hope they take away from this that first of all, Korean food is delicious. <laughs> it's so here, here. good, yeah. <laughs> um, but also how important it is to maybe ask those questions about your mom and dad. How did you grow up? What are your favorite foods? I love it. The book is called The Korean Vegan, Joanne Lee Molinaro. Thank you so much for joining us on this chilly Friday morning. Thank you for having me. It's an absolutely beautiful morning. <laughs> With you here, it absolutely Thank is. Thank you. Dan and Hazel. Love it. I love that pecan pie recipe. I'm making one this weekend. I got to yes. try it. My goodness. All now right. I'm thank hungry. you. I'm hungry for sure.